Hi there, today we're going to meet two types of tactics that were developed during the First World War as a result of trench warfare. The first is the creeping barrage. You can see at the bottom we've got two trenches, one over here and one down here. And what this tactic entailed was soldiers in this trench here trying to get across no man's land so they could take this trench over here. And what they did was they used artillery to help them with this. So you can see now that we've got the artillery back here. Now in reality it would be much, much further back. But just so that we can see the whole thing working, I've made it very close to the trench. And now we've got a soldier down here ready to go over the top. To start with, the artillery fires but well short of the enemy trench. This creates an explosion which also kicks up a lot of dirt and smoke, obscuring any line of sight across no man's land. And so the soldier in the trench can actually advance behind his own artillery fire, whilst his enemy's viewpoint is just a load of explosions coming towards them. The artillery then continues the process, firing a little bit further. This kicks up a further explosion, and you can see that now the artillery fire is starting to creep forward, hence the name of the creeping barrage. And as the explosion and dirt disappears from the first explosion, then our soldier can move a little bit further. Finally, the artillery fire will reach the enemy trench. Now the soldier just has to wait for the explosions in front of him to disappear and then he can advance up to the trench here. With a bit of luck the enemy will have seen a barrage creeping towards them, explosions getting nearer and nearer and probably have retreated by the time he got to the trench. If not they'll have just been hit by some explosions and so the soldier's job will be much much easier. But one thing to remember about the creeping barrage is it relies very heavily on accuracy when firing the artillery. This is because you'll notice that artillery fires up and down, so not like a rifle or a machine gun. And so gauging the range of the artillery can be quite difficult. At the Battle of the Somme, for instance, this tactic was still very new, and so the, the accuracy was not really good enough from the men manning the artillery to make it worthwhile. It was only really with more practice that this tactic became very useful because the artillery could put shells exactly where they needed to be. Although the Somme cost heavy casualty lists on both sides of the trenches, uh, you could argue that in fact the battle helped develop these sorts of tactics which in the long run in the war actually produced some very very effective ways of attacking trenches. A second tactic is called bite and hold. This tactic came about because what happened in battles like the Battle of the Somme was when soldiers actually successfully took a tre an enemy trench they tried to carry on moving forward. They were doing this because they wanted to take advantage of that initial success they just had, but it could turn out to be very dangerous. Instead, this new tactic, as we'll just see now, was much, much more careful. Here's the enemy trench that's going to be attacked. Remember that these sort of zigzag patterns were very common in the trenches in order to stop explosions spreading too far down a trench line. So let's say that the trench is being attacked from this direction here. So the soldier advance along, obviously is representing a group of soldiers here, and he takes the trench. At this stage it's very easy for them to move along the trench line. However, they've never got into this area before, and they've effectively broken through the enemy line. So you can see how it would be very tempting to keep moving forward into a new area. So for the time being, let's just assume that's what our soldier does. Unfortunately, this now means that he'd be in the enemy territory without any trench to protect him. So, for example, if any uh, reinforcements were ready at hand, 
or the enemy that had fled the trench had regrouped and decided to re-attack, our soldiers could find themselves attacked from three directions. And if they happen to have gone too far forward, they might even find themselves attacked from behind as well. So because of this, it was very important to not get too carried away with an initial victory. Let's say the soldier decided to stay in the trench instead. You can see that his allies are behind him still, and he's got a trench in front of him. So if the enemy wants to come and attack, then they're going to effectively be attacking a trench. This is why the tactic was called bite and hold. The bite section was initially taking the trench, and the hold section was making sure you didn't go beyond the trench, but rather just maintain the position and allowed the enemy no chance of retaking that. Now you won't get as much land as quickly doing this, but it is much safer, and it allows you to get more men in position, take your time and get ready to take the next bit of section of the, of the enemy's position. So there we have it, the two new tactics developed the Creeping Barrage and the Bison Hold. And although neither of these helped with the Battle of the Somme itself, you could see the Battle of the Somme as a learning process for both of these. And later in the war, that learning really helped make a difference with some of the later battles. Okay, thanks for listening.